asks the woman directly whether she dropped the drugs. They've dumped it as they were being brought in. Do it the easy way or we'll do it the long, hard way. It's up to you. Jenna picks up a scent and heads after this female backpacker. I had some while we were in Fiji that he was smelling the residue. The woman admits smoking cannabis in Fiji, but denies carrying anything now. Neil's colleague, Noel Thorburn, takes the woman away to be searched. Oh, it's pretty strong. I saw it's a very, very recent um, residual one, or, it's, or she's still got something with her. While the woman and her boyfriend collect the rest of their luggage, she starts fiddling with a small bag around her waist. Dogs in the a very small bag um, that's around her body. But this was that when we took her back and uh, married her up with her companion. A whispering going on, or suspected to um, up something. Noel's colleagues Ty Matai and Lauren Hunter decide to search the couple's bag separately. Despite the dog indication, the woman doesn't seem too concerned. The dog indicated on the small bag. She believes there's no longer anything else in there, but while, whilst they were in Fiji, they did have cannabis in that bag. The woman's sticking to her story that she isn't carrying anything. But meanwhile, Neil and Jenna have made a find. The dog found located on the floor a um, small package of cannabis material in it. A high chance it belongs to either of these two, which is the dog indication, and um, they've dumped it as they were being brought in. So we've just got to try and uh, prove it. <laughs> so Lauren asks the woman directly whether she dropped the drugs. confident about that. Best if you're straight with me now. Do it the easy way or we'll do it the long, hard way. It's up to you. Yeah, there was a little bit and I left it because I didn't realize Where it did you leave a it? problem. I just, when I realized that it, that I couldn't throw away, I just put it down. We have an admission. Because of the woman's admission, both passengers are going to be strip searched. I didn't do nothing wrong. But no more drugs are found in either search. I need your drink of water. Thanks. The woman has to stay for a video interview. But once he's packed his bags, her boyfriend's free to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're fine, you're walking out. Okay. Yeah. But I can yeah. they can tell me what's going on with her then? Yeah, the police will once it, they do everything. If they do the charging or if there's any charging or not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Meanwhile, Lauren weighs the evidence. Yeah, it's 4.5 exactly. It's been kept in this, this plastic bag, so it's, it's sweat. It has sweated in there, um, so it smells quite strong. The woman's taken through for a video interview. My flight number is on that car. It's the first one Lauren's done, and it goes well to begin with. Is this what you dropped? My car, that's what it's foil. The woman's denying that this cannabis is hers. So this is that one kind of Fiji. And she suddenly decided she needs some legal advice. Interview ceased at 12.36 for a passenger to consult with a lawyer. While the woman makes her phone call, Lauren gets some encouragement from her colleagues. Right, difficult one to start. She's doing well though. Yeah, you are. She's asking the right questions. Yeah. And when the interview resumes... Is that or is that not yours? The suspect's prepared to come um, clean. I'd just like to be honest as I can because I, I didn't mean to do anything wrong and so I... OK. Just take a minute, that's fine. We're nearly finished, anyway. OK, yeah, no. Is the substance in my pocket yours? Yes, I accidentally carried it with me over the airplane. OK, into New Zealand. Into New Zealand. With the woman's confession finally okay. on tape, Lauren has all she needs. And the offender's next stop is the airport police station. I do actually feel a little bit kind of um, shaken that it's my first um, bag search, my first solo bag search, my first video interview, my first drug find. So to do it all in the morning <laughs> was quite, um, quite full on, but it was good. She was, um, she was a challenge. She was quite challenging during the video interview, so... No. Um, good outcome. I've seen that on Border Patrol before. <laughs> the Immigration Service refused the woman entry to New Zealand and she was put on the next flight back to the United States. 
Quarantine Officer Terry Alkermaid is doing a routine inspection of this Korean traveller's bags. And he soon finds something unusual. Kimchi. It's kimchi, but it could have um, meat inside, so we're going to cut it open. Normally kimchi is it's fermenting and it pressurises the bag. And this one's like, just, there's not really any pressure there. See that? And there's fresh chilies. These undeclared fresh chilies could harbour dangerous pests. While Terry finds more kimchi, Brian confronts the suspect, but she appears not to understand his questions. This has been tried to, I believe this has been deliberately concealed. I believe you committed an offence. I'm going to try and take you to court because of this. Big fine. More than 200. Thousands. <laughs> Meanwhile, Terry checks the rest of the kimchi. There has been cases of chicken and pork being mixed in with it. It's just fermented cabbage. That's it. That's fine. This lot might be fine, but out front, the language barrier is proving difficult. So the woman's niece is brought in as an interpreter. Just fresh, uh, fresh chilies. Fresh, uncooked chilies. What is this from there? Kimchi. Kimchi. And these were concealed inside. The minimum thing will be a two hundred dollar fine. The maximum will be several thousand. <laughs> it was wrong to bring us, but I, we didn't mean to do it. And stuff. That's fine. So far, she's changed the story three times. She told myself and another officer that she packed the stuff. And at the bench, she's told me that her mother packed it. And then she's also now stating that her grandmother packed it. We really need to interview her, and she's been a bit more stubborn. Well, Deborah, they want to write on here that she doesn't wish to make a statement, and they will sign that. The passenger won't budge. Okay, so if you could adapt this. So Brian notes that in the paperwork. And make it... All I'm writing here is that passenger does not wish to make a statement. I'll have a video oh. Okay. You wish to sign that now? Under the New Zealand Bill of Rights, she's got that right to refuse to talk to us. Um, we've made notations on the, the, the Bill of Rights, uh, advice which she's refused to sign. She has since signed it to the effect that she does not wish to make a statement. Um, what happens now is we'll take some photos of this, um, we'll consult with a colleague in the legal section and see whether we have enough to proceed with a case, basically, or whether it will be um, an infringement notice issued which is a $200 instant fine, um, instead of going through the court system. The woman asks if she can leave the chilies, but take the kimchi. But MAF are keeping the lot as evidence. Because of the language difficulties, MAF decided not to take the case to court. They issued an infringement notice, and the offender paid a $200 fine.